Hey guys, how's it going? This is round two for the microdiscectomy surgery that I had. The first one was not as successful as I would have liked it to be. Um, so what happened was last Saturday, I woke up and it felt like I had a muscle strain. So I treated it like a muscle strain, put ice on it, relaxed for the weekend, really didn't do a whole lot, just kind of babied it. And I was doing that whole, you know, S stance. Because I couldn't stand up straight, you know, and you tweak your back. And that's really all I thought it was. I thought it was just a back strain. Uh, by Sunday, it was still pretty bad. Monday, it was even worse. Tuesday, it was even worse than that. And Wednesday, I ended up going to the ER because it was so painful. I couldn't stand it anymore. So I got to the ER. They gave me basically an anti-anxiety medication because of this campaign of being afraid of narcotics. More. I'm more. I'm probably. Which is fine. I, I wasn't too sad about that, but they did an MRI right there in the ER and the ER doctor came in and said that he's going to communicate with my doctor, with the surgeon, and let him know that what he sees is just some fluid buildup around the disc that I had surgery on that was pinching the nerve, which kind of made sense because it was a little bit sore at first and then it just kept getting worse and worse and worse. So it felt like there was just pressure buildup in that disc area. So it didn't feel like the initial injury. When I first injured my back, I heard and felt it pop and it was instant pain all the way down my leg. And it wasn't like that this time. Um, but like I said, just Saturday, it just felt like a muscle strain and then kept getting worse. So Wednesday, I went into the ER and had the MRI. They thought it was fluid buildup, talked to my surgeon. My surgeon said that he was gonna review it in the morning because it was like 11 o'clock at night. So he reviewed it in the morning. He called me first thing when he got there and he said, this is a massive re-rupture, probably three times worse than what the original one was. And he needed to get me in the office as soon as possible. So I ended up having emergency back surgery that next, that morning, excuse me, that afternoon of the morning that the doctor called me. And that was yesterday. So I had surgery last night, stayed the night in the hospital, and I'm just getting home now. So with the first microdiscectomy surgery that I had, they went in and cleaned up the excess disc that was pushing in on the nerve. Um, took the pain off that and I, I was doing really well. I didn't have any pain. I was able to walk around just fine. Um, a lot of the activities that I used to enjoy, I was able to, to pretty much do within reason. I still had to be careful and make sure I didn't re-injure it, but everything was fine. Um, but. For some reason, Saturday when I woke up, it just was a little bit painful and then it got more and more painful and I don't know if, if how I was babying it or how I was walking caused it to continue to rupture and flow out, but by the time I got the MRI and talked to the doctor, the whole disc had pretty much come out. So with this surgery, they went in and took the entire disc out, so right now I'm bone on bone basically. Um, I asked him about an artificial disc, if that, if we could put that something like that in there. And he said the failure rate of the artificial discs in the lower back is pretty high. So he says the only time that he looks into an artificial disc, disc is for the cervical spine, something in the neck where it moves around a lot. But where mine is L5-S1, it really only moves two to three degrees anyway. So his plan is, is to let it ride bone on bone until it fuses itself together. The reason why he wanted to have it fuse itself together is because it's healthier for the surrounding discs. It allows it to move like it needs to move until it finds and settles into a spot that it, it doesn't need to move outside of that point. Whereas if I had my spine fused and he put a cage on it, it would put instant pressure on the, the surrounding discs and then I have risk of rupturing those discs. Um, my L4, L5 disc is also bulged a little bit, but it's not ruptured. So he said with therapies and things like that, I can bring that one back in. I'm a little bit concerned about that one, so I'll see. I'll see how that goes. I'll continue to take it easy, but um, this time around, I've I've got some better pain medications. I'm still in a lot of pain right now. Um, I feel like I'm taking it a little bit better. I don't know if that's just because I, I know what to expect now. My first surgery was only five weeks ago. The nausea that I experienced before I haven't experienced yet. 
but I also didn't experience a nausea until about day four of last time. So they gave me the patch again. That's to try and help nausea, and then they gave me some other nausea medication. I'm on two pain medications, so one of them is for pain, and then one of them is like a muscle relaxer for the shooting nerve pain. So that should help out quite a bit. Uh, but other than that, just recovering again, going back through. I'll try to be better at updating this time around than I was the last time. Um, last time, once I started feeling good, I didn't, I really didn't stay up on the videos as much as I would have liked. Um, but yeah, if, if you like the video, go ahead and like and subscribe for any updates on the channel. Um, like I said, this is my second microdiscectomy surgery on the same disc in about five weeks. Um, this time they completely removed the disc. And if you know anybody who's going to have the surgery or if you're looking into the, sur the initial surgery, you know, feel free to share this video, like, subscribe so you don't miss any updates. And I'll continue to update everybody. Thanks.